In this video, you'll learn all the basics of the ASPX Pivot Grid Control from dropping it on the form to customizing its features. We'll start with a simple ASP.NET Web application with a Pivot Grid Control on the form. First, find the ASPX Pivot Grid in the Data and Analytics section of the toolbox and drag and drop it on the page. To customize the control theme, select the required theme in the ASPX Pivot Grid Tasks menu. For this video, I'll set the Metropolis theme. Now let's bind the control to data. I click the Smart tag, invoke the Choose Data Source dropdown, and select New Data Source in the wizard. I'll select Database as a data source type. Then create a new connection and change the data source type to Microsoft SQL Server. I use my local SQL Server and select the Northwind Database. Next, let's choose the Invoices table. I select Salesperson View in seven columns, Country, Product Name, Category Name, Order Date, Quantity, Extended Price, and Salesperson. Click Next and Finish. Now I'll retrieve fields using the ASPX Pivot Grid Designer, which allows you to customize the fields and groups and manage client-side events. Click the Pivot Grid Smart tag, select Run Designer, then select the area where you want to retrieve fields and click the Retrieve Fields button. Check all fields and click OK. And you can see that the fields for all data source columns are automatically created. Now let's run the application to see the result. You can see that the pivot grid displays all fields at the top in the filter area. To populate the pivot grid with data, I drag the extended price field to the data area, category name to the row area, and salesperson to the column area and I get a report that shows the total amount of orders by salesperson and category of products. Next, I'll show you how to customize the default layout by rearranging the fields into specific areas at design time. Let's go back to Visual Studio and bring up the designer again. First, we'll drag and drop the extended price field into the data area. Next, let's put category name and product name into the row area and country and salesperson into the column area. Also, I don't need the order date field to display whole dates, just years, so I change the field's caption to year and set the group interval property to date year. Next, I'll set the captions for these fields, category name, product name, salesperson, and extended price. Let's run the application again, and now the pivot grid has a nice layout with the fields we predefined in those areas. It also calculates the data summaries instantly regardless of the operation. For example, you can use a built-in pager to navigate through the pivot grid, either using buttons or by clicking page numbers. Note that the row area has two fields, category and products, so the row headers that represent products are grouped by category. This allows you to find a product in a particular category easily. You can collapse these groups to see only total values for the categories or expand them when you need details. Note that you have full control over the pivot grid layout. You can reorder fields and move them between areas via drag and drop. For example, let's move the salesperson field to the filter area and drop year to become the second column field. Now the pivot grid displays data for categories and products grouped by the country in each year. I can go ahead and drop the year field to the first position to group countries by year. You can also sort field values in ascending or descending order by clicking the field header. Or you can sort them according to values in a specific row or column. To do this, right-click the header of this column or row and select the field whose value should be sorted. To reset sorting, click this header again and select Remove All Sorting. To filter field values, click the Filter button in the corresponding field header. Now deselect some items and click OK. To cancel filtering, check Show All Items and click OK. End users can also build complex filter criteria using the Pivot Grid Pre-Filter. Right-click on the top and use the context menu to invoke the pre-filter dialog. Let's add a new criteria. You'll need to choose a field, a condition, and then enter the value. Let's show only products whose names start with CH. Note that after I apply the pre-filter, 
the pre-filter panel appears. You can use this panel to temporarily disable the criteria or invoke the pre-filter by clicking the expression. To clear the pre-filter, use the clear button. Now let's look at the smart tag menu. Here you can specify the data source, invoke the data source configuration wizard, change the pivot grid control theme, and launch the designer. Let's invoke the designer again and create a new group. To arrange fields into a group, select the fields and right-click them. Then choose the Move to a new group item. Now I'm going to make the quantity field calculate the average function against the underlying data instead of the sum. I go to the Data Options group and change the Summary Type property to Average and change the caption. I expand the cell format row and specify the numeric format type and F1 as the format string. Let's click OK and run the application to see these enhancements. First, let's look at the field group we created. You can see that the category and product fields are connected together. The first field in the group displays an Expand Collapse button. I can use it to expand or collapse other fields. When a field is collapsed, its detail values are not displayed. Group fields are filtered in a single pop-up with an intuitive tree-like interface. When dragging the group, it's moved as one field. Now let's try to display data for the quantity field. I drag it into the date area, and you can see that the respective data cells show average size orders rounded to one decimal place. Now let's look at the property structure of the ASPX pivot grid and specify some properties. Go to the Options View section and change the Row Totals Location property. This property specifies the location of the totals and grand totals. I set this property to Tree and run the application. And you can see that the Pivot Grid Control now has a tree-like interface and row totals are displayed in a compact layout view. Next, let's switch to the Source view to see the ASPX code structure. This selected code defines the whole ASPX pivot grid. The field element defines a collection of fields, a group element, the collection of field groups, and the options view field element stores the setting changes that we made from the properties pane. Let's make one more customization. I'm going to add a new Options Customization element to change the view of the customization form to display an advanced field list. As you can see, IntelliSense is available and I can easily type the element and attribute names. Let's run the application to see the result. Use the context menu again to bring up the field list. The field list allows you to hide and show fields. I drag the salesperson field and drop it into the hidden field section and the field disappears from the pivot grid. I can move fields between area sections of the field list. In the same manner, I can reorder fields. To show a field again, I can drop it into the column area of the pivot grid. And that's it. Thanks for watching and thank you for choosing DevExpress. Thank <laughs> you.